Yeah. I got, hold on, I got to say everything again. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to get on a record that it is Thursday, February 20th, 6.30 p.m. <coughs> the meeting is started. All right, I'm not going to, you know, say what I've been saying all of last year that, wow, I can't believe it's February 20th already, so I won't say that, but <laughs> it is February 20th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we must be having fun, I think. I don't know. Diane, please let the record show that all members of council are present. Yes, ma'am. And one of the favorite things we like to do is uh, we like to start our council meetings with the opportunity to acknowledge and, and, and uh, represent someone who's been, <coughs> who spent many, many years working with the village. Tonight we have the honor of making a presentation of a 20-year 20 20 service award to Mr. Chris Marsh. Hey, Chris. Uh, Let me tell you a little bit about Chris. <laughs> In case you don't know, Chris is, <laughs> Chris is the village engineer. And um, being the engineer for a, a city, uh, it, it, it's a challenging, it is a very challenging job. Uh, and hopefully, uh, I was talking with Chris the other day, I was saying, now you're not gonna tell me that those little slippers <laughs> of silver I see in your hair is a result of you being here for 20 years. And he said, of course not, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, Chris grew up in Royal Palm Beach, he grew up in La Mancha, so he is a hometown product. He attended H.L. Johnson. Uh, he graduated from Wellington High School. All right, we won't hold that against you. Sure. <laughs> we didn't have a high school. <laughs> Is that true? We didn't have Royal Palm by then? Okay, like I said, we won't hold that against you. He's that old. <laughs> He's that old. It's been that long. Okay. Uh, he attended Florida State University and he graduated with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. And he's worked with the village of Royal Palm Beach for 20 years. The last 10 years, has been, uh, Chris has been the village engineer responsible for engineering and GIS departments and capital projects. Chris has been responsible for the reconstruction of every park in addition of several new parks in the village. I just want to pause here. Um, I, I really felt bad for Chris. Uh, he, was, this was, he was pretty early, I think, in, in, the, in his role as a village engineer. And he got hit with the biggest project that the village had ever undertaken to that point in time, and that was Commons Park. And I'm sure he, one day he may write a book when he retires, and I'm sure he'll tell us a lot of insights about some of the contractors that he's had to work with in doing these types of projects. But I know that was, that was, uh, it was like I said, the biggest project and uh, fairly new in the, in the role, so it helped him grow up fast, I guess. With the final construction of Crestwood Boulevard, he, he also participated in that, and he will have completed an off-street bike pathway system throughout the entire village. His department recently implement, implemented the FEMA Community Rating System Program, saving residents 20% of their flood insurance. This is really significant. So I don't know if you recall a few years ago, uh, the uh, Department of Law, um, Homeland Security, I guess it was. They, they revised their charts, the, the, the <coughs> FEMA charts. FEMA, yeah. FEMA. Right. And they decided they wanted to put most of the homes that were in Royal Palm Beach underwater. And we said, no, 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 not so fast. And there was a lot of work done to, to get that readdressed and get the study updated. But, but Chris was, was very capable in getting this organization to get us uh, certified with this organization uh, under FEMA so that we demonstrated we have a very effective stormwater management system here in the village. And in fact, we didn't have you know, a, a much far less number of homes that were being shown on the map as being in the flood zone. But more importantly, the, the citizens who, who, who do get um, flood insurance in the village will receive that discount because of the certification we got in. And Chris, Chris took care of that for us. Growing up in Royal Palm Beach, having family here in Royal Palm Beach, and now raising his own family in Royal Palm Beach, every project is personal for Chris, and he complete, and it is completed with that hometown family pride. Uh, Royal Palm Beach is a place he calls home, and he helps us maintain what I call that Mayberry S quality. Come on up here. Let's let's go take a picture with Chris. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, 
squeeze in to get some Very, very, very simple. If you want to buy a print, if you want to make it. Get the wrong letter. Yeah. Okay. We got it. We got it. Can we make it? No, I want to get No, no. Hold on. I'll just wait here. I'll just wait. And <coughs> okay. As I said, uh, Ray, does it seem like 20 years to you? No. No? Okay. <laughs> it doesn't actually. I, I guess that. You must be having fun too, huh? A lot of projects in 20 years. Yeah. But we're doing very well right now. Okay, we also have an opportunity this evening to... Uh, Sorry. You, we're good? Yeah. This is a proclamation. This is a proclamation uh, declaring March as Royal Palm Beach <clears throat> Bicycle Month. And I guess Lou's going <coughs> to come up to receive this? Ride his bike up here. Yeah, you, yeah, Lou, you. <laughs> right in bike. Okay, let me read this proclamation. Whereas the state of Florida officially recognizes March as Bicycle Month, and whereas residents and visitors to the village of Royal Palm Beach enjoy safe, environmentally friendly, alternative methods of transportation that provide access to public and private facilities, such as our parks, schools, Palm Tram bus stops, and businesses. And whereas the village of Royal Palm Beach encourages the safe use of bicycles as non-motorized transportation. And whereas the village of Royal Palm Beach is committed to improving the accessibility, connectivity, and safety of non-motorized transportation throughout the village by constructing and maintaining 55 miles of paved shared use pathways and 31 miles of designated bicycle lanes. And whereas the local recognition of Bicycle Month in the village of Royal Palm Beach will increase awareness of alternative transportation options throughout the village while promoting the health benefits of bicycling along with reducing traffic congestion and ultimately uh, popularize bicycling as a viable, attractive alternative mode of transportation. And now therefore, uh, we the village of Royal Palm Beach hereby proclaim March 2020 that's Royal Palm Beach Bicycle Month. And we encourage all residents and visitors to safely explore the convenience and benefits of bicycling as an alternative to, to motorized transportation throughout the village. Signed and sealed this 20th day of February 2020. Just pay attention. That doesn't mean motorcycles. It says non-motorized, <laughs> right? So let's, <laughs> let's go get to the fork to look.
Okay, this brings us to our reports. And with that, I'd like to open up with an update on the uh, <coughs> meeting we had this morning for the TPA. Um, usually we have the TPA meetings uh, morning of third, the third Thursday of the month in the morning. Uh, and if you recall, uh, in December, when we had our last TPA meeting, I had the unfortunate news of reporting <laughs> that uh, in the process of adopting our 2045 long-term transportation plan, a motion was made by uh, a commissioner from West Palm Beach. And in the vote, it wound up uh, defeating, uh, the motion was, it was approved, the motion was to remove the State Road 7 project from that plan. And to the shock of many of us, <laughs> that's what happened. It was a nine to eight vote. There was extenuating <laughs> circumstances surrounding this, obviously, and um, in fact, one of the, the uh, members who voted didn't realize that they voted the wrong way. They meant to vote yes, and they wound up voting no. And um, it also was a request from one of the uh, uh, board members um, from the county commissioner, uh, uh, a county commissioner on the board, for us to reconsider a new resolution. Uh, so make a long story short, today we did listen to that resolution. It was a, re a motion to adopt a resolution that would approve amendment number one to the TPA's 2045 uh, long, t long, t long range transportation plan. Uh, and the resolution was to put the State Road 7 projects back on the books. There's two point parts to the project. There's one part that extends State Road 7 to four lanes from 60th Street all the way up to North Lake. And the second part is to extend uh, from 60th Street south to Okeechobee Road, move, uh, make that from two lanes to four lanes. Both components of the resolution were in fact adopted and approved by a vote of 16 to five, and it is now back in the plan. So um, we're projecting that the, the work on this project will, will start in 2022. Obviously, uh, uh, DOT, uh, uh, Department uh, FOT has um, their work cut out for them because we're, we're sure that uh, West Palm Beach is still gonna pursue trying to postpone or move this project and not have it done but at least we got it back on track and that was approved today. Another item that was approved today was something called um, House Bill 1371 and the, the, the uh, compatible bill to that in the Senate was Senate Bill 1000. Requiring all uh, mid-block crosswalks be signalized or have light signals put in, and if you didn't put in the light signal, the crosswalk had to be eliminated. <coughs> So it, it, imagine all the streets where we have mid-street where you don't have to go all the way to the corner, but there's a crosswalk set up for you, let's say in the middle of the block. Um, if we didn't, if this was passed, if you didn't have the light signals, you're supposed to do away with the crosswalk. So it didn't make a lot of sense, and, and the uh, TPA did approve a resolution opposing <coughs> this, uh, this, this bill. Uh, I'm not sure of the current status of where the bill is now, um, but maybe you give us an update on that at the next meeting. But anyway, we did do that. Those are really two major components of, of um, activity today at the TPA, and um, we'll continue to go forward. So with that, I'll start with Jan. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, I had the pleasure of attending um, Central Palm Beach Chamber's uh, tourism luncheon, and um, you know, tourism is booming here. Um, tourism is outpacing the state here in Palm Beach County by 95%. Well, that's crazy, 95%. Um, <clears throat> they are, uh, the Discover of the Palm Beaches is working on an economic strategy plan to build awareness, expanding meetings, <clears throat> um, energizing the destination development, um, organizational sustainability, improving alignment and community engagement. Well, what does that mean, right? So community engagement, they're really looking to, um, you know, partner with all the cities to bring in, um, tourism and um, showcase our tourism assets. So after the meeting, I said to the Discover team, have you been to our cultural center? Mm -hmm. They have not. So we um, gave them a formal invitation to come out and see our facility. I think that they can use it in some of their um, events that are coming up. Um, the other thing, and I know a few of us went to the Capstone Open House um, Memory Care, and, and the facility will look beautiful. Um, top quality, it's beautiful. Um, but one of my questions to the team there was, um, are you, will you be doing community activities that will involve the rest of our residents? And um, they assured me yes, so I am keenly aware of um, 
what that might look like and <coughs> we'll be excited to report when I hear that there's actually events scheduled and on the books and people are going so good thank you yeah. uh, good evening uh, Florida League of Cities Action Days up in Tallahassee took place on February 11th and 12th and uh, were more than 200 city officials uh, that were in attendance 22 from Palm Beach County League of Cities I was one of them uh, we started off that meeting with an update by the Florida League of Cities legislative uh, lobbying team. Uh, as, you, as you know, from week to week, day to day, hour to hour, things change up there. And, uh, and so they gave us a, a summary sheet uh, that updated us on nine specific items that they wanted uh, the regional teams that were formed up uh, to uh, address with about a dozen. Each team had about a dozen um, uh, legislators that we were to um, enter into a conversation with them about these items. Uh, this not only gave us uh, good updated information, but it also gave us kind of a common base uh, to be talking uh, from the same point of view, uh, asking for support uh, for those bills that are good and asking for opposition for those bills that are preemptive uh, and take away our decision making authority. Uh, there were a couple of bills in particular, one of them uh, was a short-term rental bill, which is also called vacation um, rental bills, which um, actually allow for a very short-term rental of property in residential neighborhoods. And you can imagine the problems that, that creates from parties to, um, uh, to uh, calls for police help and things of that nature, uh, as well as other uh, not so desirable uh, uses uh, in the midst of our neighborhoods. And, and so opposing that bill or those two bills, in fact, were one of the things that we asked about. <clears throat> and um, another was a uh, pair of bills that talked about home-based businesses. And what these bills proposed or stated was, again, in a preemptive way, that uh, all of other cities are, were uh, prohibited from requiring the home-based businesses to operate any differently than those located in commercial areas. And, and of course, that... That basically just brings uh, commercial business into our neighborhoods, and there's all kinds of problems associated with, with that. Uh, both of those bills are bills that we, we opposed, and what we were doing was bringing real-world examples. And so folks from Wellington brought Wellington examples. We talked about what happens here in Royal Palm. Uh, others brought their own real-world examples, and hopefully we armed these legislators to support those bills and oppose those bills that we asked them to do by, by doing that. I think it was a worthwhile undertaking. Um, uh, there, there is some good news, um, especially with regard to water. Uh, somebody was referring to uh, the emphasis that the new governor or governor has placed on water quality and water quantity as being water world. So from a water world point of view, things are looking good. There's a lot of money identified in the $92 billion uh, budget as it stands both in the House and the Senate right now. Uh, for uh, bills that support water quality improvements, water quality grants, springs restoration, uh, conversion from uh, septic to sewer, things that really have an effect on our water quality and, uh, and quantity issues. So I think it was a good, a good session. It was worth the time, as it always is, to go out there and remind our legislators that um, uh, we're interested, concerned, and, and want to help them do the right thing for us while they're way up in Tallahassee. And... Um, just as a reminder, uh, the 11th hour amendments are the ones that change everything dramatically. Hey, they sneak in at the 11th hour, they come in under the, the guise of an appropriation uh, for a budget or one thing or another. Uh, and so all of us need to continue to pay attention to that. Uh, there, there is a way, if you haven't signed up for legislative alerts, these are great documents that are put together by the Florida League of Cities that give you everything you need to know, including who you need to send emails to or phone calls to chairs of committees and so forth. This is really a great mechanism. And another way to stay up is the Monday morning calls, just as a reminder, nine o'clock every Monday morning. Um, I wanna talk about two things that have to do with our schools, just a reminder, or I, I it's not a reminder, it's actually a statement of progress. Uh, the uh, village scholarship application period closed last Friday. Uh, we have 29 applicants this year uh, for our 10 scholarships. The uh, Education Advisory Board will be down selecting through a review process that will be conducted after the March meeting. And uh, we will then be interviewing uh, those selected individuals. And um, I think that interview will take place Saturday, April the 4th. 
and thereafter we'll announce the, the winners. They'll be notified and they'll be here for a council meeting on uh, May the 21st uh, to be given their scholarship. So we look forward to that. Speaking of our schools, um, Royal Palm Beach is a triple crown winner, okay? <laughs> um, if you all hadn't read or seen or heard about this, it's a big deal, it really is. I don't know if this has ever happened before in a school in Palm Beach County uh, where a single school or a high school in particular uh, actually had um, the teacher of the year, the principal of the year, and the counselor of the year identified. And all three of these folks um, have done remarkable things for which they've been recognized. They set the bar high. They set a great example over at Royal Palm Beach High School. So we want to congratulate teacher of the year, Daniela Boyd, principal of the year, Dr. Jesus Armas, and counselor of the year, Nikki Lanier. So congratulations to them and thank them for their fine work. Thank you. Excellent. Good. Richard. Um, the only thing I would point out is uh, tomorrow night, I believe, is the uh, opening ceremonies for the uh, baseball league. Is it 6 o'clock, Lou? 6.30? 6.30. So I'd uh, encourage everyone to uh, come out and join in the festivities. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Selena. Good evening, everyone. Uh, actually, I'd like to thank the staff, first of all, for everything that they do, especially Parks and Rec over there. We've had a lot of events over the last two months, so thank you very much from classic car shows to 5Ks um, and all the other events that we do out there, so thank you. We had a um, recreation advisory meeting. So just to give you a quick update, uh, we had a presentation from the Royal Palm Beach Strikers youth, or, youth soccer teams, and they are at um, over 1,100 players that are out there, 131 of them compete. They need more uh, players, but the younger ones so that they come up through the pipeline. So they have a lot of the older ones that are out there, but it's the next generation of soccer players that they're looking for. They are offering a $500 scholarship for high school seniors, so you can apply through them. Um, and they do offer complimentary, um, or children in the foster care can play for free. So they are not charging them the, the fees to do that. Um, and that's something that they're doing to try and get more kids out there, and especially those that can't afford it. Um, be with, um, they do have a tournament scheduled the first week in May, and they're expecting 60 teams. And those are the kids 12 and under that are going to be performing out there. We did have a presentation of the Crestwood North Park, which is that park that they're building over by Bellisera, so Crestwood and State Road 7. It is 5.2 acres, which is roughly the same size as Todd Robner Park. So they gave us just a kind of idea of what it would look like. They want to put volleyball courts in, tennis courts. There will be a tot lot, picnic pavilion, uh, basketball, fishing docks, which is really cool because it's right off the canal right there. So they're putting those in there. Um, uh, multi-purpose fields and they there's an option for pickleball courts so that Ooh, yeah. that expands they are considering that as well so we're just waiting on grant approval in july and then with that we'll, we'll be able to start construction in 2021 the cultural center has lots of events coming up they're doing weddings quinceaneras um, and they are having a bridal expo march 1st and um, a father-daughter dance march 14th Young at Heart has 385 members. And some other events that we have coming up, the Seafood Festival is March 14th and 15th. The Bike Rodeo is March 21st. Movie Night is March 6th, and that's the Lion King. So that's coming up. And then also currently now through April 15th, they're offering its free tax time over uh, at the rec center. And it is for households with a gross income of 66,000 or less from 2019. They'll provide the services for free. You cannot make an appointment. It is a first come first serve, but it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday from five to eight during the week and then noon to four on Sundays. Good. Thanks. Excellent. Greg? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Keith. Uh, I'll, I'll double what the manager said. No report. Also, no report. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay, then that concludes our reports. <clears throat> At this time, if anyone uh, has a petition they'd like to present to the council, now would be the time. Okay, seeing no petitions, I'm closing the floor to petitions. Uh, tonight, uh, we do have one comment card right now. I have one comment card for items not on the agenda, so we're going to go to that. Mr. Seth Konigsberg. Konigsberg? Konigsberg, I had it right the first time? 
Come on up, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Seth Konigsberg, and I live over here on Sparrow, 156 Sparrow. I'm here tonight to bring up a matter that I've been concerned about, and I know other people I've been speaking to are concerned as well, but they can't be here tonight, and that is the outrageous amount of speeding that goes on on Sparrow. I know that there was a, a um, uh, report done in January of 18, and the next one, according to the bylaws, is not due until 2023, but I'm afraid I can't wait that long. Just the other day in my home, I heard two cars, I couldn't see them, but I heard two cars going up and down Sparrow as if they were up in Daytona, and it, it's outrageous. I've seen the radar signs, you know, telling you how fast you're going, but apparently the police just come, leave them there, and drive away, and nothing is done. I've seen cars come up to the signs, drive up to the signs, slow down to make the 25 mile an hour speed limit, but then they just zoom up once they get past it because they know nothing will get done about it. It's, it's dangerous. I've seen kids almost get hit. I've seen other cars coming out of their driveway almost get hit. And in the two and a half years that I've been here, I moved down here from up north. In the two and a half years that I have been here, it's gotten worse. People are out of control on Sparrow. And I understand that there are other streets in this town where you have in, installed speed humps and it has worked. The traffic has been calmed. But here on Sparrow, right, you know, a, a rock's throw from the police station, nothing gets done. And it's very sad to see and say, even as a new resident and taxpayer here, I would like to see more get done. And I don't know where to go or what to do about it. Thank you. All right, let me ask you a question. You said that we did an analysis of, of this street? Yes, sir. I have it from January, I believe, 28, 2018, January 26. But right. there weren't enough respondents to say yes on the... All right, so I just want to make sure that, because we do have a process in place, and it looks like you took advantage of the process, and the request was made for us to do a review. All I right. wasn't here then, sir. Say again? I was not here then. Well, who did it? Well... This was before you were... You, you, you were in the area? I was here. Then, I was here only here a few months. Okay. And I have the report right here, the final report, and I'm not sure who initiated it. Okay, but it was, uh, all right. But they, they, we did. They did. Whoever initiated, they, we did go through the process. We did the analysis. We actually did a design. Right? Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? If could I clarify, um, go ahead. sir? Are we talking about the portion of Sparrow that is going east? as opposed to west, it's not over by the middle school, it's not heading west towards Crestwood. Or you're t you said it was a stone's throw from the police department. Yes, sir, so between Partridge and Royal Palm. Between Partridge and Royal Palm. Did we do a study of that area? I thought it was a study just for the strip between um, Crestwood and Chris is Royal Palm in. Beach Boulevard. Hold on a second, Chris will come out and give us an update. I'm, I'm thinking it, that, I'm if thinking you've got it, the study there, does it say what, what range it was? Because I thought it was just for the strip between Royal Palm and Crestwood, but I, I, I don't remember for sure. It's, it's not jumping out at me, sir. All right, hold on. Go ahead, Chris. We, we did both sections. We, we studied both sections. We did not do a vote on, on the section uh, that, that he's talking about. We did, a, we did a vote on the section between uh, Royal Palm Beach Boulevard and Crestwood. Well, why didn't we do a vote on the section he's talking the, about? The, the, threshold, the, 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 the engineer that did the study recommended doing uh, the electronic so speed signs in lieu of, of speed humps. Really? Yes. And they don't do any good. Well, did, did it make, meet the standard? I'm pretty sure it met the standard over on that it, part, but I don't remember. It, it met the threshold for speed in that section. It, it, <laughs> All so. right, so let me see if I got this right. So we did do the study, but we, our conclusion was the signs. Correct. So we did put up signs? We have not put the signs up. We have but, not? But, but I, we are looking into pricing for that now. Okay. Um, Budget. We, we have a, a, a right, budget I, item for that, yes. I didn't realize that this had not gone to a, a process where the citizens would vote. I was under the impression that they had voted and they didn't get the 50 plus 1 uh, percent approval. That doesn't sound like that was the case. It's no, that was on the other side we did the vote and okay. they only got 30 percent on the other side. On this side, was this, this, was, was this one of the se sessions 
sections that the council initiated a study yes, on? Correct. The council they didn't have the 33 percent. So there was correct. No, it, it, okay. it wasn't initiated okay. by residents why, starting that, that initial process. Why did the engineer in, it recommend the signs instead of moving because, forward? Because the character of that, that roadway, because okay. of, of the, the width of the right of way in that section and, and that there was a, primarily <laughs> apartment complexes in there. Uh, that were set back away from the roadway with with individual parking lots which was different than this section uh, between Royal Palm Beach Boulevard and Crestwood. So that was one of the four that we initiated on our own? Correct. Okay, so where does that leave us in terms of options now? Is there a reason to revisit? Huh? Is there a reason to revisit? Well, it, it's, I'm glad I'm glad we got this sorted out because I, I had a different impression on what was going on. Yeah. I was under the impression that they had gone through the, the process, we did a design, and they didn't vote to say yes, right. but that's not the case. Right. That was, so that now, was only now that we're clear, that's not of, the case. Yep. Um, would it be, I don't want us to, to, to deviate from, the, from the, the ground rules we have in place, but it would seem to me we would be within the ground rules. Right now the ground rules said they have, you have, they have to get a 30% petition signed, pe people signed up on the strip to get a, to have us initiate a review, but that that uh, it, that's to, to okay. initiate us spending money on an engineering study. That, I know that. that has already been done. So okay. Yeah, but and, you said we initiated. You, you didn't say we, that we, the citizens we, didn't initiate. Correct. We, okay. we initiated, but the study already exists. Right. So in in the, the right, so purpose the study, of that study was was to to evaluate the speeds at eighty five. And they met the threshold in terms of right. something and needs the, to be done. Right. There there's certain okay. criteria that that it had to meet to be eligible for. And remember, traffic calming doesn't just mean speed humps. It, right. It I know a, n a I, number I, of other yeah other, uh, but it seems like this gentleman here is seems to be specifically asking for some kind of physical um, mediation to, to slow the traffic down so I'm trying to figure out what's what might be the right approach here do you do you would you guys like to ha sit with him or would we like to suggest something now that he can go back with well, I, we took the recommendation of the engineer before and that yeah. is to install the signs and we did put them in the budget and that was the path we were going down. Mm -hmm. But we haven't put them in yet. No. That is correct. All right. So. Talking about the trailer mounted one, I think. Right? No, we, no, we're going to no. do perm the These, permanent ones. No, no, no. I'm talking. Signs. This is the. Yeah. So the, the gentleman uh, indicated he'd had experience with the signs and it must this be. Is a sol mounted. These are the solar signs? It would be solar powered right. and it would give us their stats on, on well, the But even though, Even though the recommendation initially was that would be the remedy, is there any reason why we could not review it again? If. We got uh, the community along that that strip to kind of say, you know, we, you know, I know we know you guys didn't want to recommend something physical like speed humps, but we'd like you to reconsider it. I'm requesting speed humps. I know you are, but you're like just I said, those, those signs. You, wait a minute, right. wait a minute. People ignore them. Listen, I understand. I'm glad you brought it to our attention, but you're just one resident, okay? Um, our process is 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 based on getting. Um, the, to initiate it, usually there's a certain percentage of folks you need to get signed up to say, yeah, enough people in the neighborhood seem to be concerned, let's look into this. And then what we would normally do is, and what we did here, we, we do is a review and we come up with a, des a design solution. Here, the solution was not speed humps, it was the, the signs. Now, you're here saying, you kind of came into this process and all that was done, but you're here saying, hey, this, you don't think that's going to work. No, sir. How many of your citizens on that block, on that strip, would feel the same way you do, are willing to sign a petition or something that says that? I know at least one that I've been speaking to, and I know that there's a handful. <laughs> and I know that there's a handful from the last petition, and there were a lot of people who were, I guess, afraid to sign and put their name down on paper. What they're afraid of? I don't know, sir. People aren't afraid. People, a lot of people are afraid to speak up. That doesn't sound like Royal Palm Beach people, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Question for, or, and I'm assuming again we're talking about the strip from where Ewing Park is there heading east, not the from West Palm going by Veterans Park and the curve there, because that, that we, we are talking about from Royal Palm Beach Boulevard to Partridge on which Star is where that turn is. Yeah, yeah. It's where it is the turns. It's, right. it's all so the way through from the Palm. turns. It's, it's, it's the backside of Veterans we, Park, right? We studied all the way from Royal Palm Beach Boulevard to Partridge. Okay, right. and they. Had the speeding along the curves. Wow. Okay. No, not on that no. 90 degree no. turn. We put, okay, we, yeah. we did not. We put, we put two put sections. It okay. We, we, we tested I, it in two sections. I believe right it was two sections. What we did is took the straightest parts of those sections okay. that makes and we sense. put them in the middle of those. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Have we have we uh, recently done any show of force by having our patrols uh, there monitoring? No. 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 Yeah, he's, he's we have. Oh, he's saying yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't know we had a show of force out there on that <laughs> roadway. I live there and I work from home. And my office faces the street, and no, sir. I saw maybe in my entire two and a half years here, maybe two cars get pulled over by the police, and I don't know why, and I don't know what was done. They were probably speeding. <laughs> More than likely. The, 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 the tragedy of this, this situation um, with speeding within the villages, these are people who live in that community. You know, these are, these are na your neighbors who are, who, are, who, are, who are doing this. Go ahead, Chief. Or cut throughs. Good afternoon, Mayor and Village Manager Council, sir. I've been made aware of some complaints of speeding in there. The trailers that you're referring to are trailers that I directed to be put out there. They're Sheriff's Office speed monitoring devices, the ones that flash your current speed is, and this is the speed yes, limit. Sir. And I've also had patrols directed over there run traffic enforcement as recently as maybe three to four weeks ago, based on some of the concerns I've heard. I don't know of any hellacious numbers or offenses that we've gotten. No one's told okay. me about that, but I, I can tell you that we did have stuff out there, and okay. what he's referring to was directed by me. Okay, that's good. Good. So then if that's the case over the last couple of weeks, have you noticed anything over the last two weeks? Is this your observations? Have they been prior to the last two weeks? Yes, ma'am. Um, just within a week ago, as I, I believe I mentioned earlier, I did not see him, but it sounded and I can tell sounds, right. but it sounded as if there were two cars drag racing up and down that street because it sounded like I was sitting in Daytona. That's how that's how those cars sounded when they whizzed by my window. And that, so that was in the last two weeks, because that's what I'm trying to see is that yes. if the concerns were and then the sheriff's office did go out there and start to do some. Yes, ma'am. It was in the last two weeks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Chief. Appreciate it. You want yeah, update. Uh, Thank you, sir. What do you suggest? I mean, right. this is a policy. Uh, well, you can. It's, this is kind of, it's kind of between the cracks a little bit on the policy because Here's a case where, regardless of who initiated it, we did do a review, we did do analysis, there was a recommendation made, but it doesn't ma seem to marry to what at least this citizen is saying they're looking for. Here's my thought on it. I'd like to hear, find out we can get you know, more of the citizens in that community to step up and say, hey, you know, we'd like you to look at that as a, a different option. We can reinitiate it from the beginning, which would be well, if we get a petition for 30, from 33 percent of the residents out yeah. there, okay. and then do the 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 speech study. Or well, well, if you get the, the petition, I think Chris is saying he's comfortable with the analysis that was done about the, for the threshold, right? I am comfortable, but it, one of the thresholds in the study is, is is there's an upper limit to the volume of the roadway, right? And because that roadway is intended to take a lot of traffic in and out of the neighborhoods we were hesitant to put speed humps on there okay. for, for the, the repercussions that were associated with that and, and that that was one of the reasons the engineer chose to use a, an alternative uh, device rather than a you, you know what i always say <laughs> if the speed limit says 25 miles an hour if you do 25 miles an hour whatever we put out there it shouldn't affect you if well, we, wait, we design it right go ahead does it go over the three thousand was it three thousand our number does it go over it it didn't but it, it was it was on the upper it was get approaching that number which, which concerned us. Can you get with him, the gentleman, and explain to him how to get the, the petition, how to do the petition process? Well, there's two options for the petitions, because right. we, we, we could just, we could send out ballots to, to the residents we, in lieu no, of but the there's petition. A, but isn't there a step before that? We already did it. We already did it. Well, we already the council did it for the residents. You right, did, so, so you we, did we, the 33%. We don't need line. to do the 33%, you're saying? So do you want to just do the, the, the 50%, and if it's over 50%, then, but here's the problem then do with that, the speed though. humps? But the process says before we ask the, the, the residents to vote, we present to them, here's the, here's the solution we want to do in your neighborhood. So they've got to design the solution first, and then do the presentation, and then take the vote from the, from the citizens. The solution design that is uh, has been that is one of the, the reasons signs, though, right? 33% right. right. before we, we hire the consultant to do the design. So let's go back and because we're going to ask the consultant to do a different design, right? Let's get to 33% so that we know that we're not just chasing, that there's a real concern there in terms of uh, the number of, of citizens. And if we get to 33%, then go to the next step, do the design, and then we just pick the procedure up from there that we normally would do. Does that make sense? I think no. Yeah. 
it, it doesn't only in the sense of that because we've already done that step right. and you're saying is that it the yeah, warrant was were the signs so what i'm saying is now what we need to do is the next step because if the signs didn't work can we just go to mailing the ballot well, we not, haven't done the signs no 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 you can, we can't we can't ask them to vote we the, the process says they will say to them here's what we want to do in the neighborhood here's specifically what you're voting on Right now, we'd be telling them to vote on something in the blind. But are you asking, are you saying, suggesting then that we do the initial part where we need the 33% in order to do the I think study? we should get the 33% so we get something, you know, we have one gentleman standing here representing his, his, uh, his community. Let's get the 33%, whatever, that, whatever the number of homes are. Let's get that. Then we could say, okay, let's do a new design, do the presentation, then do the, the regular vote for 50% plus one. But with the, because that's, that's the procedure. Okay, but yeah. without the study, without calling the consultant to redo the study and pay for that fee again, then. Well, no, he's got to. He's if I misunderstood you, you got to do a new design, right? Well, we, but we wouldn't need to do a traffic study. Yeah, he doesn't. They don't need to do the study again. Well, okay, right. so they just need to. Gotcha. Yeah, this okay, is this is to give us a, that we're not chasing windmills okay. by doing a design without really knowing if there's. Can I can know. I throw something in here? I mean we. So we were following the engineer's recommendation, which was an electronic sign, electronic right? Electronic sign. But we haven't it's done that yet. So we really not. don't know whether or not it would work. Now, the limited exposure to that with the trailer-based version of that seems to suggest, based upon this gentleman's observation, probably not going to work. Um, what if we were to take the trailer and locate it out there over an extended period of time and, and monitor the results to see whether or not that's having a favorable effect? Because as, as the captain said, it's out there only on a temporary basis, so too is the patrols. It was, I mean, if, if they, that was the engineering recommendation to sign, I, I know intuitively you know, it's kind of like it's not they likely to, to work. sign but, around. They don't have a lot of them. Well, <laughs> you can do, do a mean? blind study, couldn't no, you? No, they put, put the sign out there permanently, though, uh, leave it out there for an extended period of time and monitor the results, see if it has an effect that that suggesting. We can record the speeds off of that sign, can we not? Sir, what if you yes. put the trailer out there and turn the light off? That way people think it's broken and they don't know that they're speeding. Well, if we, they can't see their speed is what I'm saying and do a blind study. Well, the, the speed, we already did that. Yeah. And, and, and we, we understand that it met the threshold as it re related to, to speeds. Hey. We, the 85 percentile was over 35 miles per hour on that roadway. So right. that, the threshold that, that our policy requires was met. So we, we did understand that there, there was a... And it was it was only a mile or two over that limit. Um, so the recommendation was because of the character of the roadway, having primarily driveways that that, that lead into other driveways and, and the volume of, of the roadway, that it would be better to to, to initiate the, the, the traffic signs and, and see what effect that has on it prior to putting physical measures out there that would slow down emergency response and, and obviously impact a, a lot of residents that rely on that roadway. But we haven't implemented that yet. Well, we, we have not, but we, it is We budgeted. haven't done it, but it's budgeted and that was right. the direction we were heading with the engineers based upon that recommendation. And I, uh, unless it's an exorbitant sum, because I know speed bumps weren't cheap when we did them on Sandpiper. <laughs> but the I signs mean, are a lot cheaper than the that. S the signs would, would be less than $5,000 to, right. to put right. it. And, and it gives us data. But, that yeah, but the, the sign solution is it's interesting. It's a solution that we didn't feel like we had to go back and get 50% plus one to say, yeah, we want that. Correct, because it wasn't a phys physical right. measure. Right. It didn't, so it didn't have the, we could do, have the we, could, pollution we could do signs it, anytime, so. any place following that model if, if that was something that we wanted to do and I, I, here's I'm, my, here's, I'm understanding the, the recommendation yeah. more to how okay <laughs> I mean because one side of the road is all commercial with no access onto the roadway the other side of the road is a part mostly apartments there's some duplexes with access off yeah, the roadway the road and then the into back, a parking lot the back and it plaza. is designed as a collector Which, road, a collector roadway I, we I will the, tell you I travel that road sometimes people do speed on there I I, pay, I know traffic coming at me and it's like and right. I think that's what the study results showed. Yeah, yeah, that, they exceed the threshold. So I, I'd be more comfortable if we got, if we, if we picked up the the process where we got the thirty three percent of of citizens saying, yeah, we like you to really do something about this, and then based on that, we would you would could do a different design, present it to them, and the design obviously it's got to take into consideration the points you raised, you know, the character of that road and and how appropriate are speed humps. Um, 
That way, that way. There are, obviously, there yeah. are other options. We, we do have an intersection behind Village Hall that where we could put a circle at probably and, and slow that, that, that straight away down. There, I'm not, yeah, when, I'm not presupposing the, that that's the, the solution. No, I, I so hear you. The, I, I, I'm, I there, there are physical yeah, measures yeah. other than yeah. speed humps that, that, that could, we could utilize. Could address the problem. But they, they so do let's, cost, they, obviously price so what, goes up with, with that. So what we agree, let's get to 30%. And if you could get with him and explain to him how, what the procedure is to go for them to do that. Because they might, if they don't come back with that, at least, at least we says, well, look, we, you're, in the confines of the process we have in place, that's, that's where we are. And, and the 33% the 33 threshold, we would create that list and we would give it to him. We would provide it. Yeah. And he would, he could, when he, when that was completed, yes. he, would, he would go to okay. door to door with that petition okay. and get 33% of those residents. Need to talk to them. Yeah, they'll explain to you what you have to do. You, you're putting yourself to work, but <laughs> that's okay. It no. needs to be done, sir. Just to address the issue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Thanks, Chris. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other comment cards for items not on the agenda or on the consent agenda, but if anyone would like to comment on non-agenda items or consent agenda items, now would be the time. Seeing none, I'm closing public comment to non-agenda items and to consent agenda items. And with that, Diane, could you give us the consent agenda? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Number one, approval of the minutes of the council regular meeting of January 16, 2020. Two, approval and authorization for the village manager to execute the second addendum to the Communication Plan Professional Services Agreement by and between my PR guru and the Village of Royal Palm Beach. Three, approval and authorization in accordance with established policy to make a budget amendment for Fund 001 in the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget. Said amendment to transfer a total of $20,000 from other contractual services 5413490 the salaries and wages 5413490 and create a new custodial position. Four, approval and authorization in accordance with established policy to make a budget amendment for Fund 303 in the fiscal year 2019 2020 budget. Said amendment to transfer a total of $23,000 from Recreation Center Painting PR1915 to Sporting Center Improvements PR1819. Five, approval of six special event permits for Our Lady Queen of the Apostle Catholic Church to hold a fish fry at 100 Crestwood Boulevard on February 28th, March 6th, March 13th, March 20th, March 27th, and April 3rd, 2020 from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Six, approval of an application for a special events permit by Big Bounce America LLC to conduct their fam family friendly inflatable festival at Commons Park. Three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, February 28th, from 1 to p.m. until 7 p.m. Saturday, February 29th, from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. And Sunday, March 1st, 2020, from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Seven, approval of a special event permit for POTTC events to hold a seafood festival at Royal Palm Beach Commons on Saturday, March 14th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, March 15, 2020, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eight, approval of a special event permit for H.L. Johnson Elementary PTO Incorporated to hold a spring carnival style fundraiser event located at 1000 Crestwood Boulevard on Saturday, March 7, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Nine, approval and authorization for the mayor to execute a traffic control Jurisdiction Agreement between Balaterra Community Association Incorporated and the Village of Royal Palm Beach. 10, approval of the bid award in the amount of $212,762 and authorization for the village manager to execute a contract with the lowest responsive, responsible bidder, Davco Electrical Contractors Corporation, for the removal and replacement of sports lighting at Bob Marcello Park. Funds to come from Project PR1806 and PR 1720. 11, approval and authorization for the village manager to enter into a sports lighting equipment and services agreement with Musco Lighting, Sports Lighting LLC for Bob Marcello Park. The cost for said services shall not exceed $351,200 and funds will come from projects PR1806 and PR1720. Okay, uh, Selena. Actually, I'd like to pull item number eight since the applicant is here. Item number eight, okay. 
Any other comments? Any other, no other comments from members on council on consent agenda? I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda minus uh, the poll item number eight. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that the consent agenda was approved with the exception of item number eight. And you are. Actually, I would like to invite the applicant to come up since she's here to tell us about the event. Thank you. Um, I gave you all uh, the flyer. We just got it today. Yep, that's it. Um, we have a ton of things planned, more than our last event. Um, the bounces, food trucks. Um, it's themed as easy being green because that's the theme of our school year. Um, I like to say that we're the greenest school in Royal Palm. Um, so it's all listed there. I hope that you guys can come. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Julie Highsmith, H.L. Johnson Elementary PTO. Um, and this is open to the public. And open to the public. Everyone's welcome. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. We want as many people as possible to come so that we can raise money for our school. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, is this geared solely towards elementary school kids, or what are the ages for the events? Because I have one who um, just got like into a, sixth grade, so would that be something for her, or she's going to be too old? No, because there's a, one of the bounces is a big, like a ninja-type course, so older kids would like that. Okay. And there's games. We're going to have a big tent. There's going to be games under there that are for older kids. Face painting. We have the pixie hair people coming okay. to put the pixie hair in. So, so not just um, elementary kids, definitely so that's good. Definitely all ages. Thank you. Um, we have some local community people coming to have um, vendor booths. Um, so it'll be really, really fun. I hope you guys can come. Thanks. Jeff. You have a uh, dunk tank? Is that what the splash zone is? It splashes on their head. So it's like a bucket above their head. The teachers, the principal, the AP, they're all going to so, so the principal is between 11.45 and 12 p.m. So show up for Mrs. <laughs> Mikowski. Just, just trying to the, help her out. They have the list there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Julie, do you want to tell everybody how the, the best way to get tickets? <clears throat> there's a website on there. Um, you can just go to that website. You put in your name. You show up. There's will call. Or you can pay cash at the door. Either way. So for the, for, for the folks watching at home, it is hljspringscene.cheddarup.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Good luck. Good. I make a motion to approve regular agenda item number eight. Second. second. We have a motion and a second for a consent agenda item eight. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that consent agenda, consent agenda item number eight was approved, 5 0. On a regular agenda this evening, uh, uh, item R1 is a public hearing to consider a variance application 19044. An application by Lee Liang in a variance order number VC-20-1. The applicant is requesting a variance from section 26-80 to allow for a, a reduced front yard setback of 18 feet for a main structure where the village code requires 25 feet for a property located at 1343 Elm Bank Way. This is a quasi-judicial process. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if you're going to be speaking to the Village Council on this matter, you need to be placed under oath. I can place everybody under oath at the same time. If you're going to be speaking, please stand and raise your right hand. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. And coming back to the Council, if anyone has had any ex parte discussions regarding this matter, those would need to be disclosed for, on the record at this time. Yeah. <clears throat> Village Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Then we can proceed. Okay. Thank you. Great. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Um, the applicant is requesting a variance from section 2680 to allow for a reduced front yard setback of 18 <coughs> feet for the principal structure in lieu of the 25 foot front yard setback as required by code, resulting in a variance of seven feet. Um, the front porch of the house was enclosed by a previous owner without a permit, and that enclosure is the subject of the variance request before you tonight. The village records indicate that the roof Just over the front down. porch was constructed with a proper permit in 1997. I can't hear you. Yeah, it's on. I can't hear you. I guess get closer. They. Oh, sorry. How's that, Paul? 
Okay. I got a thumbs up. <laughs> How'd you know it was him? You knew it was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even look over there. <laughs> we didn't say, say no more. We didn't say no more. Um, <laughs> the applicant asserts that the construction to enclose the front porch was done by a previous owner. Um, the applicant contends that the variance request is not due to the actions of the current owner. owner. Is the applicant's position that the requested variance is a minimum variance which will allow the reasonable use of the property <clears throat> and that the variance will not confer on the applicant special privileges? The applicant further asserts that, is the only, that it was only when they were contacted by the village's code enforcement division that they became aware of the structure and did not have a permit and not meet the required setbacks. Village Code Section 2632 F6 allows Village Council to grant variances of the code when I'm going to breeze through this. You guys have heard this quite a few times. Um, special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land or structure or building involved, uh, do not result from the actions of the applicant, will not confer on the applicant any special privilege. A literal interpretation of the provisions of this division would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties. Um, will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of the division. Um, and this is an illustration showing, this is the site plan showing the location of this front porch. Um, this is the front, a picture of the front porch. Um, staff is not um, in support of this variance. The Planning Zoning Commission considered the application on January 28th, 2020 and recommended approval by a vote of four to zero. And again, staff is recommending denial of this application as we feel it does not meet the um, conditions for granting variances. And with that being said, Mayor, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, is the applicant here? I don't see the applicant tonight. Hmm. Interesting. Excellent. Oh, and if I may go back, because I know that this was um, information that was has been asked for in the past um, we did not receive any letters from, from our 300 foot notice or um to uh, from any of the um the neighbors okay you didn't, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You didn't receive any letters saying that they were they were opposed or for or any, yes, no response no, at all no okay. no response at all how how did, wow. how did we find out we can't we kind of tripped over this <laughs> um code enforcement you know, i'm saying though how long, how long is this, did they have this home that they got from the previous owner? You're saying the previous owner did this work? Yes, sir. They bought the house, and, right. and then one day we showed up and said, oh, you're in violation. Right. Well, you know what the timeline on that was? No, sir, I, I do not know the timeline on that. The, the roof was you know per what? legally permitted in 97. The enclosure happened without a permit, so no, we do not know. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how long this violation was sitting there, and before we notice it. I guess when they bought, when they purchased a home, they don't, I guess the part of the purchase process is it's not a survey or something done? It, I, th I think at one point in time, they used to go back and look at building records as part of their anymore? title search. And that's something that is kind of. Because I, I, I get, that's why I was hoping the applicant was, I get them saying, hey, I bought the house. <laughs> this they, is the way they, it was, right? They bought the house yeah. and this is what it was. Yes, okay. sir. All right. Um, Richard? Okay. Yeah, I just, um, the application I don't see in, in the backup. I, I mean, I guess my, my concern is, is that was a, a sworn application submitted saying, because the, the basis for the variance here is, oh, it was this way when I bought my house, but we don't have any sworn testimony from anyone saying this is the way it was when I bought my house. So we really have no idea whether it was, we, we know when the overhang was permitted in 1997, we have no idea, we have no testimony or no anything saying exactly when this screened in or boxed in thing ever came to pass. It could have been last year for all we know, correct? Or is there something? I, I, I do not know the timelines of when um, this, this owner purchased this property, but I know that we have gone back and verified when they have purchased the property and when they feel as though this was constructed. Maybe it was you know imagery that, or pictures that have been taken, but. The, when did they purchase the property? The current I, I, like I said, I, I do, know, we do don't not know, know that timeline, 
but they have in their justification statement and we have verified that they you're looking at this they, they own this house or they purchased this property okay. um with this enclosed porch if if we don't approve the variance what happens then, then they have to tear, take down the walls yeah, tear, on, tear on down. The, can you put the picture structure. back you, you showed us a picture can you put that back sure up do. All uh, right, in this picture, what are we looking at? That's the extension. It's with that piece that comes out from the garage. Two windows. Um, okay. Yeah, it's wall. So this was previously, it was open. when right. the roof was put in, it was an open porch? It was an open right. porch, yes, sir. <clears throat> so it got enclosed. And when, it, and when it got enclosed, that's when it caught our eye. Okay. All right. And don't forget, remember, these so properties well. over in Counterpoint were originally constructed under Palm Beach County. So there's there's quite a little gray area between transitioning. Okay, between. you just you just enlighten it a lot to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I don't have any comment cards uh, for this agenda item, uh, all one. But if anyone from the public would like to comment, now would be the time. All right. Seeing none, I'm closing uh, agenda item all one to public comment and take further comments from members on council. There are no further comments. I think, um, you know, my, my personal thoughts on this is to approve this variance, but I'll look for comments from members on council. And if there are none, I'll look for a motion. You guys are looking at the documentation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm just waiting for Selena. I know she's looking up. Yeah. September of 2011. Is when they purchased, when they purchased it. it. So, Wow, it's what, nine years? Yeah. Oops, we just found this. Okay, it's one of those. Okay. Is, is there a way to look on the property appraiser's site if the enclosure was there? Uh, it, that wouldn't. It just gives you the current view? I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't give a, you. Or does that matter? It wouldn't give you that information. No, but if we're, if it would be better to either have Mr. O'Brien or Mr. Liggins put that information on the record since they would be witnesses as the deciding body. Um, okay. We shouldn't be. You shouldn't be uh, testifying. Well, you're not test. You can't testify. So. Um. So what do you want? What, 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 what is I'm, the I'm seeing the same about the same purchase date on a different source. Okay. You've got a different source, but okay. Sure. Is that on the record now? Is that good? Yes, sir. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, the, but the facts as I understand them are we know the, the property was purchased in 2011. We know they got a permit for the overhang in 1997, right. and we have no clue when this enclosure went in, which could have been done last year. Right. Um, yes. That's about right, right? There's, yes. there's no evidence against it. And again, I mean, I understand things. Code enforcement can't get everything. It is possible it's been nine years or however many years before they discover it that th that stuff does happen, but that's speculation. We can't prove it one way or the other. So, yeah, that's true. Right. It's unfortunate the applicant isn't, isn't here because yeah, with, I you know, with uh, sworn a, testimony. Sworn would, testimony would help. Would help. Yeah. Can we, uh, that, you, Bradford, you know any reason why the applicant didn't attend tonight? Were they planning on attending? I, have you been in touch with them? I do. I, yes, they they knew about the meeting, and there have been instances, and this is why this application has been this? in our process. So I'd like long to hear from the applicant. They wouldn't yeah. show up to yeah. the TRSR meetings. Can we can we uh, table this until the next meeting and ask the applicant to come so we can get sworn testimony from the applicant on record? Sure. Yeah, I mean, typically, I would you know whenever a a continuance is contemplated, I like to get. The applicant to agree but since the applicant's not here and you want to hear from the applicant um, I think it's a reasonable okay. it's reasonable to give the applicant an opportunity to come back um, if they want to get a favorable view of this it would be good for them to come in at least at least from from as you mentioned from a due process have their wherever it is they're going to present as a sworn statement that's on the record that makes sense yes sir who would contact them you we will certainly reach out to them. All right, so we need to have a, is that a, I need a motion for that. Yes, right? please. Could I make a motion to continue this until the next meeting? Second. Can we modify the motion specifically to say until the next meeting in which we expect to have the applicant present? Well, yeah, that's the purpose of uh, continuing to the All next right. meeting to have the applicant um, present. Second to the modify? Second. Second. All right, we have a, <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Diane, please let the uh, record show the motion was approved 5-0 to postpone to next meeting and with the assumption that the applicant will be here to testify. Okay? Okay, good. All right, agenda item R2 is a public hearing to consider an application 190109, an application by I Plan Design LLC in adoption of resolution number 20-01, confirming the council's action. Applicant is seeking site plan modifications and architectural approval <coughs> for an existing restaurant use situated on approximately 1.38 acre parcel of land located at 1005 North, uh, uh, North State Road 7. Um, Do we need oh, to this is a quasi-judicial yes, process sir. as well. So we need to- So anybody who's gonna be speaking to Village Council needs to be placed under oath on this one as well. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. And then back to council for ex parte disclosures at this time. Just I had none. none. Then we can proceed with the item, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. okay. Great. Um, the applicant is seeking a site plan modification, architectural approval for the repainting of the existing building, uh, minor landscape plan changes, and converting the drive through lane to a 600 square foot outdoor seating area. Um, in addition, the applicant is proposing to add, add an outdoor play area to the west of the proposed seating area. The conversion of the drive through lane will also modify the on-site traffic circulation. Village code requires any change to the traffic circulation in outdoor seating areas in excess of 300 square feet to be approved by <clears throat> a major site plan modification. Here's an illustration of the site plan, which will um, be, for the most part, remain the same with the changes occurring on the south side of the building where the decking will be placed over the current drive through lanes to accommodate a seating area and activity area for children. Or adults who wants to swing on swing sets. <laughs> <laughs> no editorial option. Whichever. Um, this is a elevation or an illustration of the east elevation. In um, friendly area, right? I believe that they're going to be selling tacos out of out of this no, restaurant, and they'll probably have their. I think. Yeah. yeah. I think. Right. Okay. Um, here is an illustration of the north elevation, the south elevation. Here, again, the east elevation, the west elevation. <clears throat> Um, this is an illustration of the pro proposed landscape plan. Much of the landscape alterations occur on the south side of the building around the outdoor seating area and play area to screen the parking areas from the seating areas. The Planning and Zoning Commission con considered this application on January 28, 2020 and recommended approval by a vote of five to zero. Um, staff is recommending approval of this application. And with that being said, Mayor, I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh I do not have any comment cards uh, from the public on agenda item R2, but anyone would like to comment, that would be the time. Okay, and I'm going to close public comment. No, I'm going to leave public comment open for a little bit longer. Does the applicant like to make a presentation? Um, good evening, um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, very pleased to be here, Brian Check, SI Plan and Design, uh, representing my client, Mr. Cleve Mash. Um, don't have to add anything to Mr. Uh, O'Brien's presentation. He did a, gr a great job. Um, just wanted to really quickly introduce who they are and kind of what's happening here. Um, long history with this parcel, too. It was a Burger King for about 14 years. And then in 2016, I came through and, and brought Zaxby's in. They did a lot of renovation work, and you know, everyone hoped that they'd be successful but it was still a fast food restaurant, drive through uh, you being utilized. I think what you're, uh, what you're gonna be experiencing with this group is uh, chef-driven food. It is it's, a, it's a taco bar, it's, it's, it's Mexican fare, but it's um, um, from the same owners that are own these restaurants that you see on your screen right now. Everyone knows Lenora's, everyone who, uh, who eats in West Palm Beach at some point has been to Howley's, Kapow, Dada, anything on, uh, on uh, Clematis. This group owns these restaurants. They're proven okay. restaurateurs. Um, this is, uh, they have one of these facilities um, on US Highway 1 in Jupiter, up at, up at the Tequesta Jupiter line in that area. So uh, they're very pleased to for the first time in basically 18 years since that restaurant has been developed, uh, changing it over to a family-oriented restaurant. Uh, if you've been on US uh, State Road 7 in the past week, 
The building's already painted. It's already, it looks like what uh, Mr. O'Brien showed. Very excited. They want to get going as quickly as possible. And uh, we think they'll be an incredible addition to the community. And with that, we'll answer any questions you, ha you might have. I guess I do have a, I always ask, it's kind of a marketing focused question where we have new businesses, and especially restaurants. How did you come to the notion that this is like Mexican taco fair? Would would be would do well in this in this particular community. Uh, well, uh, I can let the I, I can let the applicant answer, but number oh, one, yeah. But, but but number one, you, you don't have anything like it, and number two, that's and, okay. And that's one. That makes and number, sense. And number two, this is, yeah. there's a big hole in that market. And number two, uh, the family-oriented uh, nature of it, I think, fits in well with uh, the Royal Palm Beach community. But I'll, I'll let Mr. Mash uh, uh, answer. Thank you. Uh, how you doing? How you doing, All right. sir? Um, Everything he just said, absolutely true. We were looking for our next location. Oh, sorry, Cleve Mash, sorry. Uh, everything he had said is, is true. We were looking for a, a second location and um, we like to be around families and we wanna be in places where there is, um, where we, we can be unique. And we're up in Sequesta, Jupiter. Uh, there is no Rocco's Tacos, um, who's a friend of ours. <laughs> uh, you know, Rocco tends to go to, you know, Atlantic Avenue, Clamata Street, the PGA high corridor. So high traffic, high, high rent <laughs> places. We look to go oh, places where there's yeah. families. High life places. You know, more families, more community. I got it. And okay. so that's pretty much what our, our thought was. Good. We checked out the area. We didn't see a lot of uh, street food, gourmet tacos. So that's why we decided that this could be a good opportunity for us and to do something kind of unique for the area. Plus... The article in the Palm Beach Post, I believe, had an article about that kind of caught our attention. And sure. so we were like, we should go check out that area and see. Uh, there's a oh. huge community, uh, a lot more than I ever expected. To be honest with you, when we came out here, how many people, and then just in a little bit of time, how many people have been reaching out to us going, how excited they are, because most of us have our businesses east of 95, but we didn't realize how many people that work for us, how many people that live down or go downtown or actually live in this community have to drive. Yeah. So this is kind of exciting I, for us. You just said something very specific that we always, you know, we look at is um, this is the Western communities. This is where it's, this is where really where it's starting to happen. But there is a concentration of the family oriented uh, quality of life here. And I'm glad to see that, you know, you, you hey, let's bring these, these bring services. The, demand. the demand's out here, here. Yeah, bring to it west. to, yes. Sure. So instead of asking them to drive to us. Have you been in touch with the Central Chamber of Commerce? I have not yet. I suggest you, you contact them and okay. get on board, let them know you're coming to the community. At some point, Great. you may want to do, uh, if you do a grand opening, you want to kind of be involved, have them involved in that. We're all about it. Okay. Yeah, we're all about the community. Curious, what, um, what caused you to decide to add a outdoor seating area? We have it in, uh, in Jupiter, and we have an outdoor seating that faces actually U.S. Highway 1. We're almost literally 10 feet from the highway. And um, the visibility, and people love to be outside. Sure. It's the newest, like if you look at, you know, whether it be Atlantic Avenue, Clamata Street, all of these new developments are creating smaller footprints for restaurants because of the high rents, but yet they're giving them outside seating, double the seating outside and people are loving the outside this is what we live in South Florida for South the Florida. weather, yeah. the palm trees, you know, the cool air, you know, right. during some parts of the year. <laughs> uh, but now. you know, that's, that's what really people are looking for is that type of atmosphere. Where they can sit outside and enjoy the outside. So that's work for you up in Tequesta. It's, it's doing fantastic. Area. Yeah. Great. Okay. And my partner owns Lenora's, which has been around since, you know, 1976. And he's doing the same thing at Alton, where small, small footprint, huge patio. Same thing in Jupiter. He has the same type of concept there as well. Great. Good. Patio is a big part of the success. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, how long have you been in Jupiter? Uh, or we, we, we opened Papi Chulo's uh, just over a year and a half ago oh, okay. in, in Jupiter. And uh, like I said, it's just been unbelievable. But we've been in the restaurant business, you know, a long time. Okay. okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions of us? Uh, we have everybody shows up for the opening and <laughs> everybody likes tacos oh, yeah. and margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> everybody likes margaritas and tacos. <laughs> and beer. Uh, what's your timeline? Uh, well, as soon as we get into permit, um, hopefully there's not a lot of renovations. Zaxby's 
was a brand new Pretty much, concept. Yeah. And I, we feel bad that they left a lot of the improvements there. It's mm -hmm. really just adding a few things, uh, building a bar and, and a few other little minor details and it's, it's ready to open. The patio. They, um, excuse me, they, they'll have permits in probably tomorrow. And it's not <laughs> a lot of work, as Cleve said. The outside work is really where there's a lot going on to turn that drive through into a usable space sure. for the first okay. time. So, yeah, very good. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, now I would, one more bite at the apple. If anyone in the public would like to comment, now would be the time, even though I have no cards. No cards. I see no one. I'm closing public comment then on this agenda item. And any further comments from members on council? If there are none, I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve uh, regular agenda item number two. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? If we have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that agenda item R2 was approved by a uh, vote of five to zero. We wish you the best and we'll be seeing you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And viva Mexico. <laughs> Okay, agenda item R3 is a public hearing for a second Today reading and adoption of ordinance number 998, amending chapter 16, business tax and regulation, uh, registration, other businesses regulations, and art, at article, article I in general, at section 16-12. Okay, I like this wording. Special event permits, seasonal vendor permits to modify the process of special event permits and seasonal vendor permits. This is the second reading for this ordinance. Um, we did go over this before, and who are you going to update? Let me read, by real quick. read the yeah, title read real quick. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance 998, an ordinance of the Village Council of the Village of Royal Palm Beach, Florida, amending Chapter 16, Business Tax and Registration, other business regulations of the Code of Ordinances of the Village of Royal Palm Beach, at Article 1 in General, Section 1612, <coughs> Special Event Permits. Seasonal Vendors Permits, in order to modify the process for special event permits and seasonal vendor permits, providing each and every other section, subsection of Chapter 16, shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing conflicts clause, severability clause, authority to codify an effective date and for other purposes. <laughs> yes, you, uh, you're done? Yes, sir. Okay, good. <laughs> you weren't listening. <laughs> you want to add anything? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, we did approve right. this 5 yeah, 0, right? The first yes. reading? Okay. Uh, I have no comment cards for agenda item R3, but if anyone would like to comment, now would be the time. Seeing none. We're going to close public comment for agenda item R3. If there are no comments from members on council, I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve regular agenda item R3. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show agenda item R3 was approved uh, 5 0. Uh, we have no further business before the council this evening. Thank you all. We stand adjourned. <laughs>